sketch the curve of intersection of z equals x squared plus y squared, something you should be very familiar with now after studying what that surface would look like, and z equals 4. Then write the curve as a vector valued function. So for, let's start with z equals x squared plus y squared. What does that look like? It's a satellite dish, yeah. What do we call that? An elliptic paraboloid. And we graph it just like, well, you'd start off a horizontal cross section, since z is to the first power, a horizontal cross section is going to be elliptical. In this case, it'll actually be a circle. But a circle is an ellipse. And then, so you can make it look a little more circular, but you want to give it some perspective, so you don't want to make it look like a circle, because when you look at a circle from a distance at an angle, it looks like an ellipse. And then what are, what are, the, what are the vertical cross sections look like? Since it's called an elliptic paraboloid, they must be parabolas, right? Let me shoot for a point in the middle here. So that's a, how you would draw or sketch the graph of a paraboloid opening up. That's what this thing is. And now if you cut it with z equals 4, what is, it, what is z equals 4? What kind of object? What kind of surface? It's not a line. We're in space. What did, Mar what did, what did Dr. Doc Brown say to Marty? He said, you're not thinking fourth dimensionally, Ma Marty. Well, I, okay, you're not thinking third dimensionally, right? Third dimensionally in space, yeah, in the plane, this is a line, but what is it in space? A it's a plane. You got to go up one dimension, Marty. Uh, so you cut this thing with a plane. Okay, so what? it's a special plane. It's a horizontal plane at a height of four, right? So if you cut this thing at a height of four, it goes up forever. But let's say that's at a height of four. You cut it with a height of four. What does the intersection look like? Well, it looks like a circle, right? Yeah. And so how, how can you imagine the plane? Well, you could, you could imagine the plane or part of the plane out here like this. So imagine that's z equals 4. And then w when it cuts... You know, the intersection of that with the paraboloid is going to be this, this circular cross-section right here. Okay, but then that's just the first part. The second part says, write the curve as a vector-valued function. Ooh, Right, the curve is a vector valued. In other words, we need R of t, and we need the parametric equations in, in for each, each coordinate of R of t, each component of R of t. It is a curve, right? So that's the curve of intersection. And OK, well, if, if you think about it, w when does that curve occur? It occurs when the z value is 4. So. 4 equals x squared plus y squared. It's a circle. What's the radius? Now, that's the rectangular equation. We still have to get the vector-valued function. So, all right, well, you have to, and this relates to what we talked about in the last example, you have to remember the trick for going the other way, finding the parameter, not eliminating the parameter, right? If it's a circle or an ellipse, there's a way to do it every time that works. You put it, first of all, in the standard form of an ellipse, what would you have to do? You'd need 1 on one side. I'm going to change the order, make it x squared plus y squared. If you divide both sides by 4, you get x squared over 4 plus y squared over 4 equals 1. All right? And then, again, you want to make use of your favorite trig identity. Before you do that, you might want to go ahead and rewrite it x squared over 4 is x over 2, the whole thing squared. That's the same thing, isn't it? Plus y over 2, the whole thing squared. Same thing as y squared over 4 equals 1. You're going to use the trig identity cosine squared t plus sine squared t equals 1. It's in that form where you can say, hey, this guy in here, this guy's cosine of t. Right? And this guy that we're squaring right here, this guy is sine of t. So the idea is you could set cosine equal to x over 2, cosine of t equal to x over 2, sine of t is y over 2. 
I, I, except let me turn that around. Let me make it y, y over 2 equals sine of t, sine of t. And then this is how you get your parametric equations for x and y. Just multiply both sides by 2. You get x equals 2 cosine t and y equals 2 sine of t. This will, this will generate the circle. But you've got to have a third component to tell that it, the curve is at a height of 4, a constant height of 4. So what's the parametric equation for z? Yeah, it's not going to change. So if you want to write your vector valued function, you get r of t is equal to 2 cosine t, 2 sine t, and 4. And then what are you going to let t range between? Now, usually we make the domain the smallest it can be and still trace out the entire circle. So what's the smallest interval of values t can take on, and, and, and you can be sure that it traces out the entire circle? 0 and 2 pi will carve out the whole thing. I mean, you could let it get bigger. You could let t go to the right or even to the left, but then you're just going to be tracing out that curve, that circle, multiple times if you do that. And so that's going to be the vector-valued function that graphs to be the curve. 